What's up guys, Roscoe here. Today, we're gonna cut three inches off the length of this snowmobile without cutting into the intercooler, without welding, without gluing, and uh, it's gonna be pretty quick and easy. 10.30 at night, I'm tired, but I wanna do this video for you, and um, without buying a different bumper, any of that, this is one way to do it. This is the budget way, this is the cheap way, but don't watch this video and then go do something dumb to your snowmobile and then get mad at me. So that's your disclosure. Let's dive into it and talk about the cut tunnels. Now, I can tell you cutting your tunnel is a lot of work, but it is worth it in my opinion to shorten it up a little bit. It really does help. It gets that snowmobile out of the way back there. Your bumper no, no longer acts like a wheelie bar. It helps you maneuver the snowmobile in tight terrain. You really do feel this whole, core, this whole back end of the snowmobile dragging in the snow when you're doing certain moves, you're in certain terrain. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. There's a reason why all of us are doing it. It's, it's the reason that so many, uh, that manufacturers are headed that way. Um, Skidoo does it, so it is, uh, it, it's worth it for sure. Just with a few simple tools, um, you can you can do this to your sled if you choose to do so as well. I'll, I'll break it down for you right now. So notice here that this is a stock bumper. This is a chaos, so it has the aluminum bumper. Look at how far it sticks out past the edge of the tunnel. The edge of the tunnel is right here. It sticks out like almost four inches past the tunnel. So we're going to shorten that up. We're gonna bring the bumper in. That's gonna be a big part of it. Disclaimer, you are going to lose the ability to kind of use your rear bumper as a grab handle as you normally would. I never use Use mine even when I'm stuck I use different methods to get unstuck I'm rarely using that the rare time that I do need to use my rear bumper I just can grab it from the side it's still gonna serve its purpose of kind of protecting the back of the snowmobile you could still use it to tow and all that stuff it is going to be shorter it's just you're not gonna be able to get your hand through it so that's the first step and then the second piece that I want to show you guys we're gonna go into hand mode here this right here you can see and on the underside of the, sno the snowmobile you can see it a lot better but right here this is a this is a little bleed through of where that intercooler is actually welded or the heat exchanger. From here to here is about an inch, three quarters of an inch, and there's actually, there's no welding there. Focus, focus. And the purpose that it does serve is there's four rivets that run across the tunnel here. One, two, three, and four that hold on your snow flat bracket. We actually don't really need those four rivets, so we're going to eliminate some stuff there. We're gonna utilize this uh, channel here in the future to help secure that. So that's kind of the gist of it actually really simple and uh, I'm just gonna start working away, talk as I work and explain kind of some of the things that I'm going to do. This is also a great time to get rid of your tail light if you are going to do the tail light delete because why do we need those things? I don't know. Yo, first thing, uh, we're going to remove the bumper. You need a T30 Torx bit and a 10 millimeter socket, not a 13 millimeter socket, which I have. Act like you've been here before, Roscoe. If you can't remove your bumper, even this uh, mod is too sophisticated for you, so. I don't know what to tell you. Remove bumper, drop bolts everywhere. So instead of something like this, we're gonna be in the realm of something more like this. Nice. Tail light, uh, eight mil bolts, and then a fresh 3 16th drill bit to rip all these rivets out. Pro tip, the nail. The nail on the rivet is steel in a lot of these, so it's nice to knock that um, nail out of it, or down anyways. And it can be a nightmare, kind of, but um, it'll make it just so much easier to drill. The amount of struggle already happening for me at this for 10.45 install videos. Oh! -ho! Once you have the, uh, the snow flap bracket removed, you can actually see what I'm talking about quite a bit better here. Please don't cut through the weld. Just don't risk cutting into the weld and cutting a hole into your cooler because the whole reason we're doing it this way is so we don't have to cut into the cooler. We're gonna remove this tab. We're gonna remove this edge. We are gonna end up cutting through this last bumper hole right here. We're, we'll kind of make a little work right here and drill a new hole. In. And then if you do wanna reattach your tail light, you will be able to do that. 
All right, crew, once you've fumbled your way through your first cut, like I just did, or maybe you did it with precision and accuracy, I don't know how you roll. After you do that, this is where it gets important. These four rivet holes right here, one, two, three, four, you cannot use those anymore. If you try to use those, you will 100% drill into your cooler. So the only holes that you have left are these two that you will be able to re relocate. Then we're actually going to drill a, a hole somewhere in here and we're gonna use this, this slot, this T slot here that they used to mount the bags. We're actually gonna use that to help uh, secure this just for some added support. And you can probably see right there, that's uh, about an inch already gone. So we're gonna just kind of see how we can slide this back in and uh, and then you can kind of, I'm gonna hit the high spots with a, a, a sander to just kind of even it out and make sure it's all nice and it looks pretty good. All right, so we have our snow flap bracket. You're gonna need something like, uh, I'm gonna use a quarter inch carriage bolt, something uh, like this that will sit in the Polaris groove here. But we're gonna essentially drill a hole here and we're gonna tie this bolt in to replace these rivets. It will be plenty to just use these two bolts and these uh, two, two rivets. All we're really missing are these two center rivets and then of course it's gonna be tied in with the bumper um, here. So. Slide this in like that. Inserted my carriage bolts and I'm gonna put a nut on top. It's a little bit tricky. It's probably the hardest part of the whole thing is to get the carriage bolt situated in there. The snow flap bracket mounted the same way. And then make sure when you just tighten everything down that you push the snow flap bracket all the way forward to get that maximum amount of shortness out of it. Like we're talking, I mean, as much as you can possibly get without um, you know, damaging the coolers or cutting into the coolers is the name of the game here. So the two holes uh, that are closest to your seat, those are good to drill. And now I have the carriage bolts mounted. As I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drill out the last holes, uh, quarter inch holes for the snow flat bracket to kind of figure out where I can line up my bumper to uh, kind of modify the bumper a little bit. Uh, time to get a little bit creative. You can kind of do this next step your own way, however you want to mount the bumper. What I want to do is actually I want to tilt the bumper up a little bit. So what I want to do on this sled is I want to tie into this hole here to kind of tie all this stuff together. I don't want to use this hole. Now I actually have in the past drilled a hole about here just bringing the bumper as close as I possibly could. But I think on this build, I'm gonna add some height to it as well. I'm going to, that might be a little bit, so I'm gonna find a spot in this, in this top pocket here to, or actually this bottom pocket here to drill a hole and uh, mount up that bumper. And just how I like it, one sketchy hole that I might rip this bumper off with because I didn't leave enough aluminum, but we're going to find out. It's going to sit somewhat like this. And uh, I'm going to use all of the holes on the bumper to try to tie it together as best as possible. Uh, I had the bumper mocked up. I have some new holes drilled. I've scored kind of the line of where the bumper is going to run down the tunnel a little bit. And I'm actually going to trim this piece off here, kind of just make it nice and uh, sand it out. And then I will finish mounting my bumper, drill a couple holes, uh, rivet a couple spots and uh, be good to go. Going to, I'm just gonna use all the, the holes I can on the bumper, so I'm gonna do go here and here. We're gonna have an extra, extra couple extra holes, but this one right here actually tied in. There, there's a double piece of aluminum here where the, the tunnel's kind of folded. This bolt will actually catch that double piece, which is nice. Well, there you guys have it. It is 11.58 p.m., got it in before the day ends. Uh, this is the final look right here. I still have to add a rivet here, uh, figure out what to do with my tail light. But guess what we did? We got the three inches we wanted. So I measured from this finished rivet right here to the end of the bumper, it's 12 inches. I have a stock 155 sitting right behind the camera here. And uh, it is 15 inches from this last finished rivet. So we did it, three inches cut off. Also, the bumper's a little bit higher here, so that's uh, bonus as well. 
No cutting into coolers, no antifreeze, no extra parts, just some maybe a couple extra bolts I used, some rivets, and uh, that's how we do it right there. Is it the, the prettiest thing you've ever done? Maybe not, but it will help. It will get the job done. Three inches is better than nothing um, when it comes to cutting tunnels. Good little solution here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, yeah, more content coming soon. Welcome to 2021. Uh, until next time, Roscoe.